Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'm going to do a continuation of last week's tutorial on morphing snapshots in Reactor. So last week we were using a ADSR envelope to morph between two snapshots and in this video I'd like to kind of expand on the idea to use a LFO to do something similar and we're going to be choosing a new snapshot randomly um, at every new cycle of the LFO. If you like this tutorial please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're coming out with a new reactor tutorial every week and a bunch of other stuff as well. Alright so to get started I'm going to add a snapshot module to an otherwise empty macro and we can set it to be always active in the function tab of the properties and delete the inputs and outputs to the macro because we're not going to be using them. Alright so like I said we're going to use an LFO to control our morph so let's add one of those and create a control for the frequency and a constant of one for the amplitude and the outputs from the sign or from the LFO are going to have a range from negative one to one and the morph value that we want to send to the snapshot is going to be from zero to one so we're going to have these extra values from uh, negative one to zero that are not really going to be used properly so what I'm going to do is rectify the uh, sign signal which is basically um, an absolute value function it just takes any um, negative number and removes the negative sign and makes it positive and in order to have our morph start at the chosen A sound at any new note press we're going to add a MIDI gate to sync with the LFO here and just make sure to set all the modules that we add today to mono and that'll make sure that they don't uh, conflict with the monophonic snapshot module. So the next thing we're going to do is choose a random snapshot to morph into every time the output of the LFO changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So we'll use the sign output of the rectify sign module and use that to trigger a randomize function. And what the step filter is doing in between the two is it's only letting an event through whenever the sign output is actually changing. So whenever that value changes, we'll get an output from the step filter and trigger a value of 0.5 going into the randomize module. And the randomized module takes that value and adds or subtracts um, another plus or minus 0.5 to the value. So we'll end up with a value from 0 to 1. And I'm going to take that value and multiply it by a knob that controls the number of snapshots in our current bank. So you can use this knob to set the maximum snapshot that we can choose from the snapshot list. So um, say we have the snapshot knob set to 128, we're going to subtract one from it and when we multiply by our output we'll have a value from 0 to 127 and we're going to add one to that and that'll put us in the range um, that our snapshot input expects which is 1 to 128. And we can use that same value to control the B input of our snapshot module as well. Just for demonstration, I'm going to set the bank to 1. Uh, according to the documentation, if you leave this unconnected, it should automatically load whatever bank value you're currently loading snapshots from. That has not been my experience, so I'm just going to put a value of 1 in there and you know, you could make it a knob. You could even run the output from the snapshot module th um, 
the bank output of the snapshot module through a merge and then right back into the input and that would work too. And I've had some oddity with the switch input as well. Maybe I just haven't used it properly. Um, I feel like you should just be able to put a, a constant value there to choose which snapshot uh, controls the switches on the interface, but I found that if I rely on that, it doesn't work the way I want it to, so I'm just going to hit it with a constant negative value every time we select a new snapshot. And that's just going to make sure that whatever snapshot we've selected from the interface is going to control all the switches. And whichever random snapshot we're choosing here inside the structure is going to um, not control the switches on the interface. So they'll stay at the same position um, throughout. And the reason for that is that changing the switches while audio is playing can cause pretty bad glitches in Reactor, so it's just not something you really want to change if you don't have to. And the last thing we need to set up is the morph time. And just like we did last time, um, we can use the control rate. Uh, 1000 divided over the control rate to calculate the time in milliseconds um, between each event, and uh, that'll be our morph time. All right, so once we're done with all this, um, can change the name of the snapshot and um, save it, set it to mono. And there's a few changes that we still need to make, but I'm just going to uh, load this into a, an, an ensemble and make those changes there, and then we can uh, try it out. So let's load up laser base. And let's go into the structure and just drop in a copy of the macro we just made. So one thing we should change is the uh, layout is just going to, everything's going to be on top of each other. And we want to turn the um, snapshot isolate and random morph isolate options on for both of our knobs so that they're not changing every time we change a snapshot. And we can set up the um, step sizes and the min and max values a little more to here. We don't need our LFO to go too fast, but the really slow morphs can be nice. And let's make sure you set the step size to zero. And um, for the snapshot numbers, we might as well set the step size to one because any other, um, any fractional values don't really make sense. And when we're done with that, we can just resave the macro and try it out. All right, so as you can hear, this is pretty good just for creating the kind of random crazy sound effects and um, other just morphing soundscapes and stuff like that. And laser bass is a pretty great ensemble for it. Um, it's best to use monophonic ensembles um, since the snapshot module is monophonic and you can only have you know one snapshot loaded at a time. So. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out our website and please tune in again next week.